or what it takes to be happy, we have to understand what is our current blueprint of how our life's supposed to be. Now, what do I mean by blueprint? Well, we have a story in our head of how life's supposed to be. Some people's story is you work hard in school, you become really great, you're a nice person, you're a good person, and then you grow up and you take care of yourself and you find the ideal man and you fall in love and you have a white picket fence and you have three perfect children and you live happily ever after. Somebody else's story, the old story was, you work really hard in school, you excel in college, you go to work for a big corporation, and you move up through the ranks until you're the president or chairman of the company and you become successful and respected throughout life. These are some old stories. Obviously, the stories that we hear today of what people's lives are supposed to be like are completely diverse. We no longer have these little archetypes, but one archetype still seems to remain. And that archetype is, in order for you to really feel like you're enough, many people believe they have to achieve an enormous amount. They may, may do it in different ways. They may do it by building a company and taking it public when they're 27 or 25 years old, or you know, they find and create a new technology, or they become a very special doctor. But we live in a culture in the West that teaches people that you're not enough unless you do something really special and unique. And we define special and unique in interesting ways. A school teacher is not special and unique. A mother who stays home with her children day and night, sculpting their minds, their bodies, their souls, and their future is not special. We live in a world today where we treat teachers like they're nobody and pay them accordingly. And we wonder why our children seem to have challenges in learning and growing or being engaged in school. When we spend thousands of dollars on some item like a computer, but what we look at overall, we invest in for the teacher and for that person who's the personal connection with them is so small. We live in a society where many women look down and say, well, you're just a housewife, you're just a mother. See, some of the pain we have in our society is not because there's one right or one wrong approach, but because we try to make everybody fit into some particular approach to life. Here's what's gonna make you happy or make you unhappy in life. It's real simple, let's do a quick test. If you're in a situation right now where you look at your life, I know there's an area of your life that you probably feel pretty darn good about. Even if you're not happy with your finances, I bet you feel damn good close to your kids. Or if you're not close to your kids, uh, maybe you don't have any kids, maybe you feel really good about your career. If you're doing not so good in your career, maybe you got a really great body that you've trimmed down or strengthened up or you know you really shaped yourself the way you want muscularly or in the way you look. Or if that's not happening, maybe you feel a really special connection with God or really close to your mother or father or your family, whatever. Almost everybody has an area of their life they feel really good about if they're honest, if they're fair to themselves. What's an area of your life you really feel happy about? And I want you to think about it for a moment, truthfully. What's an area in your life today that if you wanted to be happy about it, you really could feel proud about it? You could feel like it's an area you're doing darn well in. And if you're really hard on yourself, there's still an area. What's an area? I want you to think of it right now. And I want you to think of that area, whether it's your body or your finances or your career or your intimate relationship or your relationship with your kids, or your relationship with your creator, whatever it is, I want you to think about why are you happy with that area of your life right now today? Why are you happy with that area of your life right now today? Really think about it. If you were in a seminar with me, I'd have you write this down. And if you can, you can put me on hold here for a second because I'd like to reveal to you what the formula is for happiness. And if I say there's a formula for happiness and here's what it is, you're gonna go, yeah, yeah, sure, that's what he says. But if you put down the answer and we can see the formula is real without me telling you what it is, you get to look at your own life and say it matches, you're gonna know this is right. So you could stop this right now if you want, put me on hold and just write down what's an area of your life you're really, really happy about, you're really pleased with, or you could be if you wanted to focus on it. And why are you happy with that part of your life right now? Even if you're not happy with everything, what's the area you're happy with and why? Put me on hold right now, or if you're not gonna do that, just think for a moment, why specifically, be real, why? Now, when I ask this, if you turn me back on now, if I ask this of an audience, I'll have people write this down for a few minutes and I'll call on people and I'll say, share with the person next to you first, what are you happy about and why are you happy in that area? And be specific. And after they share, I'll have people stand up, I'll call on a variety of people, and I say, ma'am, tell me, what are you happy about? And she'll say, well, honestly, I'm really happy with my body. She goes, I never thought I'd say that, but I used to be so unhappy with it, and you know, I finally, I, I did some things, I pushed myself through, and now I exercise regularly, and you know, I'm not perfect, but I feel fit, I feel strong, I feel energetic, and that's really, I don't know, it just feels good to me. Now, 
I say to everybody, I'm now going to show you what the formula for happiness is. And it's real simple. I want to reveal it to you so you don't ever forget it. Whenever you're happy with an area of your life, it's because right now, your current life experience, I call it your LC, your life conditions, the conditions of your life, your life conditions in that area match or equal to your blueprint, your story, your belief about how life should be in that area. So this woman says to me, I'm really happy with my body because it's not perfect. Her blueprint is I don't need to be perfect, but it's so much better than it was. I'm fit and I'm strong and I have this energy. Her mental blueprint says, I should be fit, strong, and have energy. I don't need to be perfect, but I should be that way. Well, when my life, my body matches how I think it should be, I feel good about my life. I'll ask somebody else. I'll say, you know, tell me an area you're happy with. Someone else will say, well, I'm really happy with my career. And why? Well, I'm doing better than I even thought I would be. I mean, I'm ahead of the schedule of where I hoped I'd be at this stage. I'm working at this level in this company, and I have these skills and this ability, and it's even better than I thought. Well, once again, listen, this person's happy with this area of their life because their current life conditions in the area called their career are even better than they expected they would be, better than their blueprint, better than their belief of how how it should be. If it's really better, you tend to be over the moon. One one woman would say, you know, I kind of tell you, I said, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my whole life. How come? She goes, because I have this man in my life and I'm in love with him and he loves me and I can be myself with him. And he, we have this incredible intimacy and this passion and we want to be with each other all the time. And and I never get bored with him. What's her blueprint? You want to be with somebody that you can have total intimacy with somebody who you love and loves you. Those are part of her rules, her beliefs of how it should be. She said, you know, it needs to be, I never want to be with anybody else. I want to be with them every moment. Her blueprint about how life should be and the way she lives, her relationships even better than she hoped. When it's better than you hope, you're going to be totally excited. So think about this then. What's an area you're not happy with? Let's see if we can find the formula for unhappiness. If the formula for happiness is to be able to meet your expectations or exceed them, that really makes you excited. But to be happy, you got to at least meet it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But if you generally are meeting what you expect you want from your life in that area, you feel good. Life conditions match blueprint, feel good. So what makes you feel bad? What creates pain, stress, frustration? Real easy way to figure it out. Answer this question. What's an area of your life you're not happy with? Let me be honest with yourself. And even if your life is great in all kinds of ways, I'm sure there's an area you'd like to improve. Anybody who's honest, if they're doing great in their career, very often they don't take care of their body so much. If they're really focused on their body, you know, very often they find themselves in a position where they're not spending enough time with their kids. Or if they're spending time with their kids, their intimate relationship's not doing so well because it's the nature of human beings to focus on areas they feel comfortable with and strong in and give those time and the areas they don't feel so strong and they go, I don't have time for it. What they're really saying is I don't feel very competent in that area. So what's an area of your life that you are not as happy with? I mean, it's healthy, honestly, to look at areas and say, I don't like it. I want more. This whole concept of a breakthrough is about how do I close the gap between where I am right now and where I want to be. That's what we're here to do. It's like, here's where I want to be. Here's where I am. It's healthy to see there's a gap. That makes me have this hunger, this drive to grow, to feel alive, to expand as a human being. So what's an area you're not pleased with? Is it your body? Is it your finances? Is it your career? Is it your spiritual life or lack thereof in terms of feeling connected in that area? Is it your kids? What's the area? What's the area that's not where you want it to be? And then answer for a moment, why aren't you happy with that area of your life right now? Why specifically today are you not happy with that area of your life at this stage of your time of your life? Again, you can stop this and write it down. Might be useful for you. Or if you're going to keep it running, you can stop it and you'll turn it right back on and I'll kick into it. Do that now. Or if you kept it running, then just I'll give you what happens. I have people write this down and they don't like this exercise so much. Well, I don't like my body or I don't like my finances. I don't like my career. I don't like the person I'm in a relationship with. I don't like myself the way I'm in relationships. Why? And they write it all down. Have people share back and forth. I call on people and the lesson's pretty clear. I tell people in advance, here's the formula for unhappiness. I'll show you before you do anything else. When your life conditions, when your life conditions, the way you're living your life today does not match, it doesn't equal your blueprint, your story, 
of how it's supposed to be, then you're going to have disappointment, frustration, or pain. If your life is way different than the way you think it's supposed to be, you can have enormous pain. If it's a little different, you might feel stressed. Make sense? So people stand up and they say, tell me, you know, what's the area you're not happy with? And the person says, well, you know, I'm really not happy with my finances. And I go, why? And they say, because I'm doing worse now than I was five years ago. I made mistakes in the market and at this stage of my life, I should have this much money and I don't have it and I don't know how to change it and it's making me crazy. And why are they crazy? You say, well, because they don't have their economic needs met. No, you cannot have your economic needs met and you can still be okay. But when you have an idea, this is what my need is and I did the wrong thing. My life doesn't match how I'm supposed to be. That's when people get a little crazy. See, think about it. If you grew up taking care of folding your own clothes, making your own meals, going to the store, doing the grocery shopping, cleaning the bedroom, cleaning the house, vacuuming, taking out the trash, and you did that your whole life, then if you have to do that later on, you don't feel like you have economic pain because you don't have a maid. But if you grew up in an environment where everything was done for you, you never have to work, and now suddenly you have to work incredibly hard to just pay enough money to pay your bills, and all of a sudden food is building up and the house is dirty and your clothes aren't folded and nothing matches, you might find yourself really angry and frustrated because you have a different story about how life's supposed to be than how it is. Someone else will say, well, I'll tell you why, because I'm in a situation now where, you know, I'm 30 pounds heavier than I should be. Should be is the key word. There are people, there are people in all cultures who love being big. There are people that will walk around and someone else might think they're massively overweight, but they're going, I own this, honey. And they really, truly, they match their blueprint. Big is beautiful because their idea is big is beautiful. I'm big. That's beautiful. Matches my blueprint. Rock and roll. I'm happy as can be. Somebody else can look like a twig and be stressed out saying, I hate my body because their blueprint says I should be the skinniest thing on earth and I'm not skinny enough. Am I making sense? When your life conditions don't match your blueprint, you're going to have pain. But here's when you suffer. When I ask people, who here has been through the dark night of the soul? Who's been here in a situation where you feel like, like, like life, life isn't worth living? Or we feel like a pain that just will never go away. And a lot of people write down those experiences, like Joaquin. So you'll begin to understand what the issue is I'm talking about here. Joaquin, if you recall, was in a situation where this man felt like there was no reason to live. He couldn't work. He couldn't do anything. His life was worthless. Why did he think that? Because he had a blueprint. And his blueprint said, I need to be an NBA basketball player, or at least a professional basketball player. I need to be able to make money and have this great lifestyle because that's what makes me worthwhile as a human being. That's what makes my family respect me, my mother, my, my uncles, my aunts. I'm the successful one in the family and I make the money. I support everybody. He's a good man. He didn't come just to be successful. He took care of his mother, his family. He's, he tried to be an inspiration for people. Joaquin Hawkins is a man who was always going out on his free time and training kids and showing them the pathway to freedom. How they could play basketball and get free like he did and get out of the inner city. So this man is not a selfish man, but he knew this is the way to be worthwhile. This is the way to be able to give to people. This is the way to take care of your family. And all of a sudden, one night, what happened? That way was taken from him. He has a stroke. In the middle of the night, his life conditions make it impossible to be who he has to be or he feels like he's worthless. You get it? We have a, an identity. We have a, a, a story of how we're supposed to be. And if life somehow gets in the way of that story, we feel pain. But if we feel we have no control, that's when we go into suffering. See, it's one thing to say my life doesn't match my blueprint. I got to lose weight. That might stress you out. Or my life doesn't match my blueprint. I I'm not in a relationship. I got to get in one. That might motivate you even. You might not like it, but you're going to find a way to get in one. Or my career doesn't match how I should be. You could change it. But when you start believing that your life doesn't match your blueprint and you have no control to change it, you're helpless, that's when people suffer. And so this week for your breakthrough, it's a chance for you to start to take a look at your blueprint anywhere you're really having pain. Hey, look, if you're doing great in some area of your life, celebrate it, of course, and I'm sure there are many areas you are, but life is really a series of growth spurts. 
I mean, two things in life make you feel alive, growing and giving. And what's really wonderful about this man, Joaquin, is he was constantly growing, trying to get better, trying to be a better teammate, a better basketball player. Think about it. When he didn't make the teams and he didn't make the NBA, he didn't give up. He worked even harder. The guy was always striving, striving to become something. And he became it and he achieved it. And then life took it from him. Isn't that the common denominator with so many of the people in the stories of this six part series that you saw, these six specials? I mean, Frank and Kristen had a blueprint of what life was supposed to be about. We're supposed to get married and have children and we're gonna have our own business. And all of a sudden, life doesn't match the blueprint. And suddenly there's depression because in their case, they said there's nothing we could do, but they were wrong. They were wrong because they discovered, and Frank discovered, I can make a difference in my wife. The chair, even though I didn't create this and didn't ask for it, this chair does not define me. I can become more than I was before. I can have the impact with my wife. I can have children. We had to change his blueprint because we couldn't change all the conditions of his life. Does that make sense? I couldn't get him to physically walk again. Maybe someday he will, but we can't count on that. What we gotta count on is that he can be fulfilled by seeing he isn't helpless. And I did that through a series of experiences that violated what he thought he couldn't do. The same thing was true with almost every one of the people we worked with at some level. And in Joaquin's example, it was also true. Joaquin said, well, I, I can't ever have this quality of life again because I'm not a professional basketball player. And he was locked into that mindset and all of us get locked at times. But to his credit, to a system of steps, we were able to break him out of that. We were able to get him to see that he isn't helpless because here's your choice. Watch this now. If you're suffering, if you're in pain, your life doesn't match how you think it should be. And you think you're helpless to change it. Now you have only three choices. Choice one, blame something. And that's what Joaquin did, if you recall. He blamed his coach. He blamed what happened to him. And of course, these things were outside his control. But he blamed his coach. And a big part of the healing, if you watch this session, was bringing his coach in and getting him to see, hey, you know what? All that anger, all that resentment inside of you, Joaquin, A, it's not based on the truth. And B, like Nelson Mandela said, you know, having resentment in your soul is like drinking poison and hoping that your enemy will die. It doesn't work that way. And when Joaquin was able to break out, his breakthrough was a change in perception to realize this coach wasn't stopping me. I just felt like I lost everything and so I don't know how to change it. So I'm looking for something to be mad about, someone to blame. So, so I don't have to blame myself or I don't have to feel so helpless. Because when you're angry, you don't feel so helpless. You feel strong for the moment, even though it's a fake strength. When he was able to make that breakthrough, he could stop blaming because these are your three choices. When life doesn't match how you think it should be, blame something, an event, someone else, or yourself. As we talked about earlier in the series, blame games just destroy you. There's no progress when you blame. For the moment you feel okay, but nothing changes. What are your real choices? You only have two choices in life. If life doesn't match your blueprint, you either have to change your life that is, you gotta say, you know what? My body isn't there. I'm gonna go work out. My relationship isn't there. I'm gonna change it. You know, I'm not making what I gotta make. I'm gonna retool. I'm gonna get a new skill. I'm gonna go back to school. I'm gonna start a business. I'm gonna do something. You have to do something to change your life. Or in order for you to be happy, if you can't change your life, you're gonna have to change your blueprint. Usually in life, it requires a little bit of each. Does that make sense? And if you change your, take change your life and change your blueprint, you can have an extraordinary life. And what you witnessed this man do was once he let go of his anger and his denial, once he started to look at things, he began to find by spending time with his family that he was worthwhile being loved whether he played basketball or not. Of course he'd love to play basketball, but professional basketball was no longer a part of it. And we had to get Joaquin to shift that. And Joaquin is a metaphor for all of us because all of us are gonna have times in our life when what we want or think life should be like isn't gonna match how life really is. Those moments, if we blame, our life goes into pain. If we change, we can change our life and match our blueprint. But we have to also know when it's not within our control. And that's how we're able to make a shift and change what our story is for our life, what our expectations are, not by lowering them, but by changing what that model really is. I hope this makes sense to you. I'll give you a great example. Years ago, I, uh, I do a lot of work with business people, celebrities, people of all kinds of walks of life. And I was dealing with a group of people and they knew a very, very 
powerful celebrity. And without, to give that person privacy, I won't tell you too many details, you can't figure out exactly who it is, but it would be a person who was very successful as a woman, uh, who was extremely attractive by cultural standards, uh, a woman who's uh, had a lot of dear friends, a lot of deep respect. Um, so great skill, great ability, extremely talented, quite attractive, quite wealthy in financial terms, and lots of great friends. This would be for most people's idea, the ultimate blueprint. If your life matches that description, you must have an incredible life. But ironically, this particular individual, as famous as they were, was depressed all the time. They had seemingly everything, and yet the person was depressed. How do you get depressed when you're smart, and you're strong, and you're beautiful, and you've got great friends, and you're rich, and you're famous? Well, it's real simple. People said, I don't know what it is. Everyone's tried to help her. She's been on the, through counseling. She's got all these different drugs. Nothing's working. She's taking antidepressants and she's still depressed, which is not uncommon, by the way. Because if you change the way you feel physically, but you still see your life doesn't match how you think it should be at some level, and you feel like you're helpless to change it, you're going to be depressed. So I said, bring her to me. I said, I can help her. I know that sounds like hyperbole, but I absolutely can help her. Well, how do you know that, Tony? Because I already know what the problem is. I know if someone's depressed, it's because they feel helpless because their life doesn't match how they think it should be. I just don't know what her blueprint is, but we'll find out what it is. And we'll either help her change her life or we'll help her change her blueprint or both. Long story short and very quickly, I'll tell you the core of it. She came to me and she spent maybe the first half an hour telling me, apologizing, saying, I know I should be happier. I know it's silly for me to be depressed. I don't know why I'm so depressed. I, I, I know I should be grateful for what I have, and I am grateful. And it was all these reasons why she knows she should feel good, but still didn't. And I try to finally explain to her, listen, I don't care about that. I care about you. The fact that you're not happy has nothing to do with what you have or don't have. The fact that you're not happy is that your life doesn't match the way you think it should be. And you have some idea of how you think it should be. And worse, if you're this depressed after all this time, you feel like you can't do anything. You have no power to change it. You feel helpless. And she looked at me in a certain way and I said, so what is that? What did you want your life to be like? She goes, well, it sounds stupid. I said, it's not going to sound stupid to me. She said, well, I don't know. I just always, since I was a little girl, dreamed that I would be married and I would have three basically perfect children and they would love me totally, and I love my husband, he'd love me, and I said, okay, so how's that working for you so far? And she said, well, I think you know, because a pretty famous person, she said, I'm divorced twice, I have no children, and you know, I'm now X age. And to give you a clue, that age would be an age where having a child, your own natural child at least, barring a medical miracle is not gonna happen. So I said to her, well, why don't you just adopt? She goes, no, 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 that's not it. And so what I had to dig under is, remember we talked in one of the earlier sessions about there's the surface problem and then there's the deeper desire or need. So I said to her, I said, well, what if you couldn't have the husband but you could have the kids? And she smiled and she said, I'd take that. <laughs> I said, well, why not adopt your kids? She goes, no, it has to be my own blood children. So I kept digging to find out what was behind her blueprint. Because your blueprint is just a projection of what you think you need to be happy. But as human beings, we're notoriously ineffective at knowing it's gonna make us happy. So much that we think we're gonna make us happy, we get there and we go, is this all there is? So many things that we think are gonna make us miserable and we can never deal with, we go through it and we can handle it. We're not good at projecting these things. There are all kinds of studies will show this. So I said to her, well, what, what are you hoping to get from these three children? Why do they have to be your blood children? And she finally said, well, if they're my blood children, I know they'll always love me. They'll never leave me. What was she looking for? Unconditional love. She had this big blueprint that said, white house, picket fence, three children, perfect husband, you know, all these different things. But what was behind that was a need, a need to feel like she could have love that would be certain and wouldn't go away. So I can help her meet that need. So I said to her, I said, well, Maybe one reason you don't have a husband is because every time you look at one, you're trying to figure out if he's going to get you those three kids in time and how that's going to happen. And maybe he feels a little stressed when he's, you're looking at him this way because he can feel what's going on behind your bed, even if he doesn't know what the words are. And she started to laugh. She goes, I guess I've probably been that way a good portion of my life. And she goes, people wonder, you know, why I'm so uptight. I said, you're uptight because 
you were felt like you're running out of time trying to meet some picture. But I said, all you really want is love. I said, don't you have a lot of love in your life? Tell me about your friends. And gradually, I got her to start seeing this love that she was trying to get was already here. It didn't match the picture. Maybe, maybe we could paint a new picture of what life could really be like and make sure that picture met her deepest needs. That's basically what we did with Joaquin. Joaquin wanted to be a professional basketball player because he loved basketball, yes, but also because he wanted to be that man who was a leader. He wanted to be a man who was the good man. He wanted to be the one who brought energy to people. He wanted to be the man people would look up to. He wanted to be the man who could take care of his family in style, all of his family, not just his daughters and his wife, but other people as well. Underneath it all, he wanted to know that he mattered. And through the process that you saw in this show, he began to find out that he didn't need to be angry at the world, that yes, his blueprint was taken from him, but his soul and his ability to be a special human being that could touch other people was not taken from him. That maybe his real gift was his ability to inspire young kids, his ability to get himself to do whatever it took. How did he become a professional basketball player? Unbelievable discipline, unbelievable drive. He started bringing that to picking up trash and the game started to change. He started to have fun there. He could have come home and take care of his kids and pay his bills. That doesn't solve everything, but it gives him a way to suddenly regain himself. When he sat around with all of his family, and you saw part of those scenes, and if you watch the little areas of browsing this week, you'll see some more scenes from his family where you see him begin to realize they love me whether I'm rich or poor. They love me whether I'm a professional basketball player or not. They love me. That's what he was really after. And when he got that, it allowed him to let go and say, I can do other things. That doesn't mean he won't have challenges. We're all going to have challenges in our life. It doesn't mean that at times he won't wish he's doing more. But he's no longer stuck. He's broken through because he now knows I have control. I can change my life or I can change my blueprint. And when I do, I can fulfill it. I can start to feel that aliveness. Now here's the trap. What do you think happens? Once you fulfill your blueprint regularly, once you figure out how to do what you always dreamed of, you always dreamed to live a certain way and now you're living that way, living that way, living that way every day. Well, the human nervous system, human spirit needs to grow. So pretty soon you'll get bored with that and you'll come up with a new blueprint. <laughs> that's part of the part of life that's exciting. See, if you and I from this day forward are gonna be happy, just remember what we've said, it takes two things, grow and give. A meaningful life comes from growing, that sense of progress, and it comes from having life not just be about me, but about we, doing something that makes me feel connected to other people besides myself. That growth, that sense of contribution fills a deep spiritual need that we all have. If you are unhappy in your life, you got three choices, really two, blame, that's not a choice, it's not gonna work. Don't blame someone else, don't blame the event, don't blame yourself, just figure out what you're gonna do to change your life. That's my specialty. If you like my coaching or my team's coaching, come visit with us. Come to an event. Come get a coach. Come to a program, and we'll guide you through it more than just a few minutes like this, and we'll do it directly, an environment that'll shift you. Or change your blueprint. You're going to have to rewire what's going on inside, and that's what we focus on as well. So I hope this journey has been an interesting one for you. I hope it's opened up your eyes to what it takes to go from where you are to where you want to be. It takes changing your emotional pattern. It change bringing presence to your life. It takes realizing you have no problems compared to somebody else and putting your life in perspective. It takes the ability to deal with those extreme stresses that happen in your life by questioning your limiting beliefs. And again, if we'd love to coach you and show you how to change those in a permanent way where it happens automatically, just like lifting weights so often until the muscle's always there and you find yourself able to follow through. It takes for you to be able to figure out how to deal with crisis and how to turn it around. It takes facing your fear. It takes pushing yourself through what used to stop you. It takes putting yourself in a position where you connect to what's more important than just yourself, what you value than just yourself. And it takes, I think in this case also, the ability to realize that no matter what happens to you, you're more than that moment. You're more than the story you think you're supposed to be. And that even when you're not matching what you think you need to be, Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe you're having to find a different part of yourself that's gonna fulfill you at a much deeper level. Sometimes failing to get your goal gives you your destiny. I can't tell you how many people I've known over the years who had an idea of what they thought their life was supposed to be like and they didn't achieve it and they felt miserable and upset and frustrated and one day an opening happened and they went, oh my God, thank God that didn't happen. I think it's Garth Brooks had a great song 
And it's a song about when he was in high school and he was in love with this girl, infatuated with her. And she didn't even know that he existed. And he prayed to God every day that she would notice him, that she would fall in love with him. And then sure enough, she never did. He was so disappointed. His blueprint didn't match. His life didn't match it because she didn't even know he existed. And he felt this suffering. He could do nothing to turn it around. Well, 15 years later, he became a guy named Garth Brooks, somebody everybody knew. And he could rock you know, stadiums with his energy and his song and his music. And he goes back to be at his high school reunion. I think it was his 15 year reunion, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the exact year, but all I remember is he said he saw that woman that he was so obsessed by. He was looking forward to seeing her. And now he was Garth Brooks and he met her. And after he met her and spent some time with her, he wrote a song called, Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. <laughs> Sometimes not getting your blueprints, the best thing that ever happened, because the disappointment drives you to find something more important inside of you. Or, not getting it makes you look for another aspect of your life, a spiritual aspect, a, a family aspect, a physical aspect. If you can just trust that life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, then you can find in any situation a benefit that can take your life to the next level. I don't care if you're Frank and Kristen, I don't care if you're you know, Mandy and Scott, I don't care if you're Joaquin and Kim, Every one of us in our life is gonna face situations where it feels like we have total trauma, something that's been taken from us. The real question is, what are you gonna do with it? Some people just live in their story of what they don't have, and they have the right to do that. If Frank and Kristen lived in pain and felt bad, we'd all say they have the right to do it. It's the difference between what you have the right to do and what you deserve to give yourself and others. We have the ability to transcend whatever happens to us. There's something called post-traumatic growth. Very few people know about it. Two people go through the same stress. One's destroyed, the other grows. What's the difference? The people that grow will not give up. They don't have any excuses. They find the way to break through whatever it takes. And when they do, three things happen. Number one, they realize who they really are and what they're capable of. They realize they're so much stronger than they thought they were. And number two, they deepen all their relationships. You want to know who really cares about you, who you love and who loves you? Go through some tragedy, go through some hard times. All your Facebook friends go away. Your real friends, your real family shows up for you and you show up for them and it deepens your relationships. And the third thing happens if you can push yourself through and break through whatever challenges life gives you is each time you have a breakthrough, you get stronger. And it almost like builds a psychological immunity in you where suddenly, all of a sudden, it's like stuff happens, you know stuff's gonna happen and you're not scared of it anymore. Because after you've been through a stroke, after you've been through you know, losing the use of some of your body, your senses, after you lose a family member and you break through to that, you get to the other side, it's like, give me your best shot, life. It's almost like there's this psychological immunity that says, I'm ready for whatever life will give me. I don't want challenges, but if they're here, I know I can handle them. That strength of spirit is what creates a sense of freedom and joy in life. And that strength of spirit basically comes from living a life where you are confident.